What's going on? Welcome in to another episode of the Fantasy Football Fellas Podcast. Normally, Tyler and I are recording on a Friday, but we are giving you a live episode today. We are out here recording October 1st, 10 a.m. Central Time. I got my coffee with me this morning. I never have coffee with me on an episode. Lucas joined by Tyler Plath this morning. I'm at Lucas Wenzel on Twitter. Tyler is Tyler underscore Plath. Good to be with you on a Saturday, man. It's good. I always enjoy these Saturday episodes. They're they're straightforward. They are. There's not a whole lot. I, I shouldn't say there's not a whole lot. There's a whole not lot. As, <laughs> there's a whole lot, but there's not as much that we need to talk about, right? Versus a weekly preview where we're going through every game. Every and stuff. single game. Yep. It is, this is news and notes. We're recapping Thursday Night Football. We're getting into the starts and it, it, where we fly along. I love these episodes. Uh, make sure before we dive into all that content, though, you follow us on the socials. FFL is on Twitter. The FFL is on Instagram. Fantasy Football Fellas on Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. And hey, if you want to join a community full of Fantasy Football League winners, we are 1,200 strong over there. Uh, head over to our chalkboard down in the description of the audio podcast or YouTube video you are watching. Uh, we drop our weekly rankings, our start sets, player props, waiver wire picks, anything of the sort. All of our advice is in our chalkboard. Make sure you go check that out in the description. Tyler, as you said... It's it's a straightforward episode, but there's a lot to cover in this episode. But first, I want to start with recapping Thursday night football between the Dolphins and the Bengals. I feel like there's only one place to start with this game, and I don't want to discuss it too long. But Tua Tagovailoa, obviously very scary incident in this game. We can question whether he was medically clear to come back. We can question whether he has a concussion, a back injury, whatever, neck injury, anything of the sort. We can question all that. Um, but last I checked, both you and I are, we both have business degrees. We, we, yeah. we did not study anything in the medical field. All we can do is put it in the hands of the medical professionals to tell us what is actually going on with Tua Tagovailoa. We can question what's what the world is going on the Dolphins organization but it's scary everything with Tua is just scary right now I really don't want to speak much on the nature of the injury or anything but the tea leaves just show me like Tua is I feel like Tua shouldn't be on the football field for the foreseeable future yet he traveled back with the team so I I don't know I don't know if you have anything you want to add on to that but I am like I, we need to put it out there. I'm no medical expert. I just go off of what I've seen, the way his fingers, you know, curled up and his arms were angled. And like, I, I know that's potential brain trauma. Um, and that was tweeted out by medical professionals. That's not me just like pulling something out of my rear end and, you know, hoping it sticks on the wall. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add on to that, but I am like, it's scary. Somebody in the Dolphins organization needs to step up and probably take response, not take responsibility, but like make sure Tua is actually ready to come back and play football. And I'm going to leave everything else in the hands of the medical professionals. I, I think part of the unease that I feel about it is just knowing that it's the Miami Dolphins organization. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, it's hard not to think like worst case scenario, worst outcomes out, you know, you know, the worst of this, right? It's hard not to think that. Yep. Um, I mean, your mind just goes like, do they pay somebody to say that he's good to go back? Right. Like, and that's, you don't want to think that, but like, right, that's just where your mind goes. After right? what we saw against the Bills and then the response to another whiplash, you know, head impact on Thursday night. I don't want to sit here and speculate too much on anything awful or evil or messed up. Right. I don't want to speculate on that, but also you just have to like, like you said, these are the questions you ask when something like this happens because Tua should not have been on the football field on Thursday night. He was not a hundred percent. Yeah. I, I also know though too, um, I think it was Mitchell Schwartz. If you don't follow Mitchell Schwartz, he's a he's the former Chiefs right tackle. 
if you don't follow him or at least kind of check in on him on like social media and stuff, I highly recommend it. He's got he's a great foul. He's, a, great he's a he's a he's got a perspective that not a whole lot of people have. But um, he tweeted out the video of T. Higgins getting pretty much decapitated against the Jets, oh, right? Sweet. Yeah. And somehow he was good to go after being unconscious on the field against the Jets. And so I think the one thing that I, you know, putting two aside and looking at a bigger picture, the NFL has a massive problem that they need to kind of figure out, right? Yeah. And I don't, I, don't, I don't know if necessarily the answer is like, okay, if someone, you know, is injured in the game and is checked for, you know, brain injuries, head trauma, whatever you want to call it, I don't know if we can, you know, immediately say or make a rule to immediately rule people out for the following week. I don't know if that's the right answer. I, I'm not again. I'm not a doctor. I don't know these kind of things. Right. But you have to like again. The NFL has a bigger problem if we're going to if we're giving this so much attention when a player literally last week in the exact or is playing in the exact same game got knocked unconscious and got you know decapitated. The week before, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's that's where I'm at. I'm I'm sitting back. I'm watching, but it things could get really, really interesting here in the next couple of days or weeks. Yeah, it'll be interesting what the NFLPA finds out as they launch their investigation into even what happened the week prior to Tua Tagovailoa. Right? Um, I don't want to sit and resonate on that too much, but I do have three big questions I want us to recap from Thursday night football. And I think this is how we're going to do it from now on. We're going to call it. We call it three big questions from Thursday night. I think that's kind of catchy enough. Uh, yeah. So that's how we're going to recap Thursday night football from here on out on these starts at Saturday episodes or stardom Saturday episode. Excuse me. Um, three big questions. First, first question I want to ask, is it time to panic on Jamar chase six targets, four receptions, 81 yards on Thursday night. He's had less than 13 fantasy points in each of the past three weeks after his week one explosion. When T Higgins did leave the game, now that T. Higgins has been back for three straight games, he's outscored Jamar Chase. Like, are you ready to panic on Jamar Chase at this point? Nah, not necessarily. I think, I think, I'm getting closer to the point of saying we're, we can't expect like the 35 plus point weeks that we saw last year, right? Sure. Like, that's probably where I'm getting closer to. But at the same time. Four for 81 is 12 points. He scores, it's 18. That's a good week, right? right. So, and, and I know we also, we tweeted out something over on Twitter, which you should go check our Twitter out. Um, FFL is on Twitter. Thank you. Um, Jamar is currently sixth in unrealized air yards and 45th in target quality. So it seems like Jamar Chase, he's being looked at. Um, but with the current state of the Bengals offensive line, it's really causing problems. And I just, you, you, you think throughout a season, a team either adjusts or makes, you know, changes that can improve the current situation. So if, if anything, I think there's still room for Jamar Chase to improve, I'm not ready. Pan I'm not really panicking, like if at all, about Jamar Chase. I think some managers are going to be ready to panic, and I don't think you should. That being said, Jamar Chase is going to be my number one buy low candidate next week, unless if somebody just throws up an absolute stinker, you know, uh, like a Devonte Adder, you know, a Stefan Diggs or something, right? Like even even Stefan Diggs, you won't be able to buy him though. This is like a trend that we've been seeing: less than 13 fantasy points in three straight weeks. T. Higgins has outscored him when he's been on the field. Like I like Jamar Chase could be my number one buy low candidate probably. Um, I want I still want him on my teams because I do believe in this offense. Like Burrow, like it was a struggle for Burrow to to start the season and he still hasn't looked great. But he's a quarterback four in fantasy right now. He's got three games of twenty plus fantasy points this year. Like I'm not. I want pieces of that offense still. But we'll talk about another piece here in a bit. But I actually want to pivot to the Miami Dolphins and ask this super annoying question, a question I didn't even think I would have to be asking this year. Miami Dolphins backfield, who would you rather have going forward, Raheem Mostert or Chase Edmonds? Let me let me <laughs> let me let me set the scene though. I don't want you to just <laughs> just blindly answer that question. Raheem Mostert, 15 attempts, 69 yards on 72 
percent of the snaps on Thursday night football. Also had three targets, two receptions, and 12 yards. He, I believe he has outsnapped Chase Edmonds um, the past two weeks now, if not the past three. I can um, confirm that for you. And yeah, confirm that for me quick. But I know Raheem Mostert has outsnapped Edmonds the past two weeks for sure. Chase Edmonds, on the other hand, and you can confirm this for me once I finish Chase Edmonds' stats here. Snap percentage has been declining every single week this year. 63% week one to 51, 44 to only 28% of the snaps last week. Like Edmonds, like in plays where Edmonds should have been out on the field, he was not out on the field, which is concerning. Six or less rushing attempts in each of the past three games. I mean, he threw on three targets, two receptions for 14 yards and a touchdown, which saved his day. But it does not look good for Chase Edmonds, a guy who I absolutely loved coming into the season, getting in a Mike McDaniel's own run scheme. So, all that being said, can you confirm Raheem Mostert has outsnapped Chase Edmonds the past two, if not three weeks? Correct, and it's for the last three weeks. It has been the last three weeks. So, who would you rather have going forward, Raheem Mostert or Chase Edmonds? Keep in mind, they both scored only 10 fantasy points on Thursday Night Football. And Chase Edmonds outscored Raheem Mostert last week. So, who would you rather have going forward? Uh, neither. <laughs> good answer um good answer good answer because because <laughs> this, <laughs> um, this is just giving me vibes from when shanahan first took over in, in san francisco right um i'm trying to remember who the running back was for the niners at the time but he came from atlanta guess who he brought with him from atlanta i believe it was a guy by the name of tevin coleman how about it was that tevin coleman yep and I'm I'm like 90% certain this is how it played out where you had a starter, right? Or you had a guy that you're like you you can you look at the two and you're like this guy is probably better than this guy. But at some point the guy that's more familiar with Shanahan kind of overtook the snaps. And then it started this whole, I mean, where we are now today of just like... <laughs> was that Shanahan. was that Alfred Morris and Tevin Coleman? Am I remembering that correctly? I don't know if it was Morris. Because I remember that. Because there was somebody in the, in the 49ers backfield I absolutely loved. And they brought over Tevin Coleman. And they also brought in Jarek McKinnon that offseason, did they not? Yeah, I think McKinnon, but he got injured, right? So Right. Yeah. At any rate, I'm that's not important. The, continue, I'm going to look this up. Your, <laughs> Continue your point here. Um, I just, I think what McDaniels is realizing is, oh, maybe Chase Edmonds really isn't that good of a fit as I thought he was or whatever. That's why he's using Mostert. But uh, uh, you're going from, I, I'm I'm not going to disrespect Edmonds or Mostert because they're better football players than me. Let's, let's just keep it <laughs> let's real. Let's just put that out there. Um. But, like, you're going from not so great running back to not so great running back, right? Like, yeah. so it, it, when you're when you're comparing two players that you see in equal caliber, you're obviously going to go with a guy that's more of a scheme fit and more familiar with the offense than you are with the new guy, right? So, I, I mean, if there's one, if you, you know, if the Martians are pointing the death laser to planet Earth and I had to choose one, right? I'm going most hurt. Give me Iguodala. Give me Iguodala. But I, I, I'm I'm fully expecting by the end of the season that this is going to come f- like full circle and Edmonds is going to kind of be back in the backfield again. Sure, yeah. It's one of those where if you roster either, you're not necessarily dumping either, but you're definitely not starting either because it's just that ugly right now. I, um, I 100%. Go ahead. Ooh, here's that running. So... Uh, Kyle Shanahan took over in uh, 2017. Yep. Uh, the running back in 2017 uh, was none other than Carlos Hyde. Oh, that was Carlos Hyde still. Yes. That and was then, Carlos Hyde. And then Matt Brieta came in in 2018. Yep. And I'm pretty sure where. Wow, I uh, went way back for Alfred Morris. Alfred Morris would have been like Alfred, 2015, in, 2016. Morris was there in 2018. Oh, he was still okay. Oh, I'm thinking I'm of wondering. Alfred Morris on the on the back when the Commanders were the Redskins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, 
So, Not oh, it was 20, 2019, right? So you go from Carlos Hyde, who was 32, so yes. he was out the door by then. Matt Brieta had a fairly decent year with the Niners at yeah, that point. Nice. And then, then they signed Coleman in 2019. And that's when everything kind of like, yeah, because then it was Jeff Wilson, Moster was on the roster, Brieta was on the roster, and then Coleman. But yep. everyone was expecting Brieta to be the running back, uh, and that it turned out to be Tevin Coleman. Right. So we're, we're seeing a little bit of that flip-floppiness of that Shanahan way in Miami right now. Yeah. I think both are rosterable. Both are not startable, though. Big Correct. difference there. Correct. All right. Last question I want to get here, and then we got a lot to cruise through. Joe Mixon, 17.4 fantasy points on Thursday Night Football. Have any concerns around him been alleviated? But I do want to go ahead. Go ahead. I'll let you speak first because then I do have some thoughts on this. But um, it's more of additional context than anything else. Yeah, Mixon is uh, not doing well this year. <laughs> that's <laughs> way that's to put the, it bluntly. <laughs> like you have to keep it blunt with Joe Mixon at this point. Like he's just yeah. not been good. Or I, I mean, is it possible that the you know current state of the Bengals' offense is kind of affecting Joe Mixon as well? I think so. I think I think that look good whatsoever, and that's clear. Right. Looks like it's impacting him. And also, the play calling has been a little strange too. Like, I, I, I don't um, remember who I saw it from on Twitter. Zach Taylor, the new Pete Carroll. We can't run the football, but freaking a, we're going to continue running the football. Like, <laughs> yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. So, like, yeah, I, I just, I just, Mixon has not been good, and. I think you can also group Mixon into this group of wider or running backs that is currently growing of like, you know, the Austin Ecklers of the world, the Najee Harris's of the world, right? Like they should be doing better than what they're doing. And, you know, for whatever reason, whether it be efficiency reasons or the pieces around them or whatever, right? They are just not doing well at all. It has not been good. For the Bengals offense. Um, at 24 attempts for 61 yards and a touchdown. Garbage. I mean, four four targets, four receptions for 13 yards. I mean, that's great for PPR formats. But, like, he's averaging only two and a half yards per carry this season. And this was great. I saw this tweet from Dave Kluge, football guys. Um, Mixon's averaging half a yard after contact per attempt this year. You want to know who the lowest was last year and what their – Yards after temp per con or yards after contact per attempt was that was a mouthful. <laughs> that was a lot. So Mixon is averaging half a yard after contact per attempt this year. Bottom of the league last year was Jamal Williams at one point four yards after contact per attempt. So Mixon is like awful right now after yeah, contact. It, he gets that's hit, a full he yard. Down. That's right. a whole yard. <laughs> that's a whole yard, which is a like. It doesn't seem like a lot, but per attempt. We're not just talking yards after contact as a whole. Like, per attempt, that's bad. He's only broken two tackles on 82 rushing attempts this year. That's horrendous. That is her. Like, Joe Mixon has got to be the most baffling elite fantasy running back this year. Because all of his metrics say he sucks. <laughs> I, I, that, okay, I was extreme. All of his metrics say he shouldn't be... A top 10 running back right now, but he is. By fantasy standards, he is right now. Are you selling high on Joe Mixon after this game? I, that's the question I need to pivot to to wrap this out. Are you selling high? Um, I don't I don't know if you... I mean, I don't know if you can really sell high on the guy right now. Like, yeah, 17 is nice, but, like, even selling him right now, I don't know if you're going to get, like, the right value back for him just because of the other performances he's had. Right. Like, yeah, I need, I like, I think if he had scored like 23, 24, then yes, I'm selling high, but 17 for, I mean, as good as 17 is right. Like that, let's let, we should, maybe the best way to phrase it is this 17 really should be kind of like celebrated more. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> like I think the best way to explain it is like in boxing terms, right? Like 17, 18 points. That's like a nine out of 10 on a card. Right. Like, right. And then like 
anything over like 22, 23 is a 10 out of 10, right? Like, yeah, like that's, and everyone, of course, everyone looks at the 22, 23s is like, holy smokes. Right. But like to expect that out of a player, um, <laughs> it's just not real realistic unless your name is Christian McCaffrey, Jonathan Taylor, Cooper cup, right? Like, like it, 17 should be praised more for, you know, how good it is. But that being said, because people are going to say, well, it's not 21, 22, 23. I don't know if you can really like sell high on him. Quick name game. Cause I know you love name games. <sighs> I feel yeah. like I'm just, I, I, I love doing this to you. I, I feel like this we need, like a, name, we need like a name it. game drop, right? Like yeah, just, just, to be, just to get your reaction. I don't have to say like, I want to play a name. Game. Oh, you know um, how like Ernie Johnson has his little segment on NBA or, you know, yes. NBA and yeah. TNT, and then <laughs> yeah. for the longest time it was like sponsored by nobody, right? Yeah, this yeah. is this game. <laughs> yep. Uh, Joe Mixon, Najee Harris, rest of the season. Who'd you rather have? Oh gosh, <laughs> probably Mixon because I trust the offense a little bit more. Yeah, Joe which Mix- is sound sounds weird, but <laughs> Joe Mixon, uh, or Joe Mixon, Austin Eckler, rest of the season. Austin Eckler. Someone offers you a trade right now, Joe Mixon for DeAndre Swift. I'm. Like I'm getting Swift, if, like yes, I would get Swift be, in return. Yes, yes. If you have to give up Joe Mixon, you get DeAndre Swift in return. Would you do that? Yeah. Joe Mixon, Dalvin Cook, with lingering shoulder injury. Yeah, give me Dalvin Cook. There's one more name I wanted to throw in here, and I don't remember who it was. Uh, oh, uh, Joe Mixon, Derrick Henry. Um, that sounds crazy. I know it sounds kind of crazy, but given how bad this Titans offense is. And they played a pathetic Raiders defense last week. Yeah, Derrick Henry. Yeah, I think I would Derek lean Henry. that way as well. Yeah, I yeah. think I would lean that way as well. Alrighty, that was our Thursday night football recap. Three big questions from Thursday night football, plus a little bit more. We got pretty deep into that. But let's <laughs> move on to news and notes from around the league, powered by our friends over at Sleeper, the number yeah. one fantasy football platform in the world it is where we play all of our fantasy football leagues you can join over four million people on sleeper by using the link down in the description of this audio podcast or youtube video that you are oh. watching i'm just gonna fly through these tie because we gotta get to start some sits and player props as well chris mccaffrey oh brother logs a limited practice on friday he is questionable for sunday let the drama begin. Last time we saw this, in, uh, uh, an injury in general from Christian McCaffrey this season, it was like, oh, he got cleated. He'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Now this is a little bit more concerning. Uh, that is something to keep an eye on over the weekend. Keenan Allen, I should, over the weekend, the next 24 hours. Keenan Allen out on Sunday versus the Texans. Uh, Mike Williams, must start now? Yes. I mean, he was already in our lineups anyways. We <laughs> Right. <laughs> high praise for Mike Williams. Uh, Josh Palmer, are you firing him up? Yeah, I think yes. you have to. I think you have to. Uh, let me. I want to pull up Josh Palmer's numbers quick. When Keenan Allen has been out for the past two weeks, Josh Palmer, ninety-one uh, percent of the snaps in week two, ninety-three percent of the snaps in week three, eight plus targets in each of those games. Caught a touchdown in week two, uh, ninety-nine yards in week three. Uh, he put up 13 plus in both weeks. Uh, and then you now get a decent matchup with the Houston Texans. Uh, since the Chargers can't run the football, I'm expecting them to torch Houston through the air. Uh, yeah, give me some Josh Palmer. I'll sprinkle some Josh Palmer in my lineups. I think he's a great DFS play this week. If his price is down still, uh, I, oh, I haven't yeah. checked his price. I assume his price is still really nice. I would I would absolutely throw him into my DFS lineups this week. Amon Ross St. Brown ruled out for Sunday. Teammate DeAndre Swift also out on Sunday. DJ Chark questionable. You really want a deep DFS flyer this week? Josh Reynolds, baby. Josh Reynolds. Get Josh Reynolds in your lineup against the Seahawks. Uh, I made a... Can I I do a quick, like, personal shameless plug? Quick? Oh, yeah. For sure. I... So, I made a a YouTube video for uh, our friends at Fantasy Pros. (laughs) Love Fantasy Pros. Uh, I did 10, 10 deep stashes for your lineup this weekend. Josh Reynolds made that list. I am absolutely loving that pick now. Um, mostly because Reynolds has scored double-digit fantasy points the past two weeks. Uh, he's been on the field for 70-plus percent of the snaps. Now you get Amon Ra out. You get DJ Chark, who's questionable. Like, it is Josh Reynolds and TJ Hawkinson. 
So I feel like you're, you're going to get a ton of Jamal Williams in this game. We'll talk about him later. But I like Josh Reynolds. You want another DFS play this week? Josh Reynolds is going to be an awesome flex in DFS lineups this week. Michael Thomas ruled out against the Minnesota Vikings. David Montgomery also ruled out. Fire up Khalil Herbert. Uh, awesome, awesome matchup this week for Khalil Herbert. He needs to be in your lineups. Gabe Davis aggravated his ankle in practice this week, but he's, quote, on schedule to go. Like, basically, Baltimore and Buffalo are going to be experiencing some of the impact of her, not impact, but, like, it's going to be stormy and wet and 20-mile-an-hour winds in part because of Hurricane Ian, right? Um, prayers out, obviously, to anybody impacted by Hurricane Ian. Um, at, at any rate, though, Gabe Davis, I he was my start of the week, and then I heard that, and I immediately pivoted away. Um, I wouldn't expect a ton of passing to go on between Buffalo and Baltimore this week. Uh, with Michael Thomas out, Jameis Winston also out. Andy Dalton will start for the Saints this week. What does that do for Chris Olave for you? I, I just want to ask context of that question. What does that do for Chris Olave? I still think Olave has a decent game because Andy. I, let I mean, let's be real. Andy Dalton is not, you know, any scrub at quarterback. No, no. Um, I. It'll be interesting to see how the Vikings play it because, I mean. I feel like you should kind of <laughs> try to take Olave out because then there's no one else. <laughs> but um, I, I like Dantzler, <laughs> who we despise, or 41 year old Patrick Peterson, right? Yeah, like, like is he you, actually 41, you, or am I just coming up with that? No, number? you're I, you're coming up with that name <laughs> or that. I, the, the, I that am number. okay. I, I don't know who is I. Oh, I'm thinking uh, Terrence Newman. Oh my I'm gosh! I'm, I'm associating Pat Pete with Terrence oh, Newman. Oh man! Oh yeah, because I remember he was 40. Yeah, Patrick Peterson is not 41 years old, but yeah. Patrick Peterson has—he's seen better-ish days. Yeah, I Anyways. mean, yeah, you're you're firing up Olave this week, and I don't know—I don't know if he finds the end zone, but I feel like the volume is going to be there just because the Vikings play a very much like just don't beat us deep. You can you can beat us up front, right. but not not nothing over the top. They'll throw Cam Bynum, Harry Smith, seen any of the sorts over top as well. Patrick Peterson, I was off by nine years, man. He's only thirty two. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> Chris Godwin, Julio Jones, both game time decisions. J.K. Dobbins is off the injury report and will play this week. And hey, Tyler, your buddy Michael Gallup, Yay! no game designation for Sunday. He will make his 2022 season debut. Uh, also was in that waiver wire stash video. Michael Gallup only rostered in 32% of Yahoo leagues. I uh, should be on. Uh, he should be on a few more rosters. <laughs> yeah, just a few. Honest. Yeah, just, just a, a few. few. Like, like we're not saying he's going to be the same. You know, 2019 Michael Gallup before CD Lamb showed up, right? But like, if Noah Brown could be top 25 in this offense. I, I'd like to think Michael Gallup can at least crack top 30. Right, right. That was News and Notes, powered by Sleeper, the number one fantasy football platform in the world. Sorry for the voice crack there. Uh, you can oh, join, I know. What, what was that? <laughs> you can join 4 million other people on the platform by clicking on the link down in the description of this audio podcast or YouTube video you are watching. All right, Tyler, we got to get to starts here, and we are going to fly through these suckers today. Starts of the week at every single position. Let's start with quarterbacks. Uh, this is an interesting name here. I sneaky liked him as a streamer this week. Marcus Mariota. Yeah. <laughs> Going up against the Cleveland Browns, and I know a lot of people are like, well, it's Marcus Mariota, bro. Like, what are you talking about? He's been yeah, well, good. he's been sneaky good. Um, and especially when this Cleveland defense is going to have no Miles Garrett. Yeah. Uh, and potentially no Jadavion Clowney. Um, so there's <laughs> quite literally like zero pass rush on the Cleveland yeah. Browns Outside right now. Outside of those two, it's, yep. Um, and the Browns are currently giving up the 11th most fantasy points to quarterback so far. Um, and like, I think the best example of this is, uh, yeah, they did shut down Pittsburgh, but like, this is a completely different beast. Uh, to prepare against just because there are so many ways that Atlanta can attack you. Right. And they may not be the best at attacking you, but they have options. Uh, yeah. So it could be, it could be Marcus Mariota rushing. It could be Cordero and receiving it could be Cordero in the run game. 
Drake London could have a game of his career. Like I sneaky love Drake London in like DFS stuff this week. Like I it, believe I have Drake London as a top twenty five wide receiver this week. Yeah, like he's I. This feels like a game where Marcus Mariota is going to be able to not necessarily cut up the defense, the Browns defense, but he's going to put up like 18, 19, 20 because there's going to be some rushing involved. He's going to throw a couple touchdowns just because Cleveland's defense is not really, they're not really slowing down many people. And again, they, I think I think context matters though to a certain extent, right? Like they shut yeah. down Pittsburgh, they were winning a lot, or they were winning against the Jets, and then they blew the lead. But guess what? That all falls on the defense, right? And and the, the game against Pittsburgh, I'm going to call more of an anomaly just because that's a you know sure. get right game. I I like Marcus Mariota this week, and if you're looking for a streaming option at QB, I think Mariota is the way to go this week. All right, my start of the week. Uh, I should start with this. Last week, I need I need to go back to last week because on the podcast last week, I was talking about how I feel like it could easily be another dud from from Carson Wentz, right? Like he he's been quarterback three the first two weeks. And we go into week three and he gets a tough matchup with the Eagles, and I just had that feeling in my bones, right? We we're going to get that dud of a Carson Wentz game, and what did we get, Tyler? Yeah, we got a dud. We got a dud <laughs> a of a Carson dud. Wentz game. <laughs> And, and, and not entirely his fault, but it was one of those where, like, that could not be sustained. So now, this week, right, like, I'm trusting my bones again, the feeling I got in my bones. This Broncos offense is going to get it together this week, and that means Russell Wilson is my quarterback start of the week because this Broncos offense is going to get it into full gear. This is like... If you want to get right game for the Broncos, this is the game to do it because this Vegas defense has been absolutely in shambles to start the year. Vegas is allowing the third most fantasy points to quarterbacks this year. They've allowed a quarterback to score 20 plus fantasy points in every single week this year. Justin Herbert, Kyler Murray, and Tyler, the other quarterback, score 20 plus, your guy, Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill drops 20 on you. Russell Wilson, fire him up. 20 plus for Russell Wilson this week. The divisional opponent, both teams desperately need this win. This Raiders defense, I like they have just looked so bad. They made the they made the necessary additions and they just cannot get it together. So, I'm firing up Russell. I, honestly, if I can make all of my starts of the week Denver Broncos players, I would absolutely <laughs> I, like out Javante Williams start of the week. Cortland Sutton start of the week. Albert Quagbenham I probably wouldn't start him, but like you get my, you, you catch my drift, right? Melvin like, Gordon. Melvin, Mel, I spot start. I think he's a spot start this week. If you're desperate at running back this week, if you like are desperate at flex, like I love Melvin Gordon this week too. He stumbles into the end zone. He's, he gives you 12. Like, I think that's legit. Fire up all your Broncos this week. Russell Wilson, I, he'll get it together. And then I'll probably go sell high on him. <laughs> <laughs> but That's for now, he's point. my start of the week. <laughs> Let's move on to running backs. Uh, Tyler, I, I sneaky love your your start of the week here. I don't think he's getting enough attention this week. And I think people think it's a deceptively tough matchup. But re- but really, it's not. Uh, Damien Pierce is that guy. <laughs> I can't say that. Um, like, Damien Pierce is now getting the bulk of carries. <clears throat> excuse me, in the backfield now, and he's going up against the Chargers. We're giving up the ninth most fantasy points a game to running backs, and some of that is kind of receiving uh, skewed a little bit, a little bit. A little bit. Um, but here's the thing. They're giving up about five yards a carry. Uh, Damian Pierce, uh, I'm not going to say he thrives on efficiency in big runs, but I'm pretty sure last week, I guess he had 20 carries for eight yards or for 80 yards. Wow, that would have been really bad if it was eight <laughs> yards. It would have been 20 C-H carries, light. eight yards. They just kept <laughs> feeding him the football. They just kept giving him the ball. Um, no, this is I. This is a yeah. Like you said, this is this is a matchup that people look at and go like, uh, Are you sure? Are you are you sure? I'm positive. Uh, yeah. Fire up Damian Pierce this week. Like I think. I know you have said like he's a he's a flex play for the rest of the year. 
Like I would be, I'm comfortable saying that Damian Pierce is like a running back two this week for you. Like, yeah, I think he's a low-end running back two this week. Yeah, like this is just a this is a good matchup. He could find. I mean, I'm not going to say it's a guarantee he finds the end zone because that's a pretty. He could though. He could though. So yeah, Damian Pierce start him out this week. Yeah, I like that pick because he's a guy who you're not. Again, I don't think he's going to like explode this week, but his lines at 11 fantasy points on Prize Picks. Uh, use the promo code fellows when you sign up uh, over there, get an instant match on your first deposit up to $100. Um, his line's on 11 fantasy points over there, and I'm I'm fine taking that line. I, you know, again, 70 rushing yards, I don't think that's undoable. A uh, couple of receptions in there, adding some, like, like 11 points isn't that undoable, and I think that's going to be what you're looking for, considering, like, running back production in fantasy this year has just been down as a whole. It's, it's like ab- abysmal. <laughs> it, it's been really bad. So Damian Pierce, if he scores 12 and a half, like he could wind up being the running back 20 on the week, right? So yeah, mm-hmm. I, I like him as a, as a start this week. My start of the week at running back uh, is going to be maybe somewhat obvious, but Jamal Williams, with the Detroit Lions, this is, this is a no brainer. Like when we were talking about game previews on, on Wednesday, uh, sorry, that episode came out a day late. We were having incredible issues getting that, <laughs> getting that uploaded. Oh, gosh. Um, that was an absolute pain. Um, yeah. This is the easiest start this year for me, though. Easiest start of the year. Seattle has allowed a 100-yard rusher in every game this year. Javante Williams, Jeff Wilson. Oh, shoot. I had – who who did they play last week? Cordell Patterson? Yes, Cordell Patterson. 100 yard, hundred yards rushing last week. Uh, and two of those running backs have scored 20-plus fantasy points. So I am like – all systems go on Jamal Williams this week. Seattle's also allowed the fourth most fantasy points to running backs this year. Fire up Jamal Williams. Easiest start for me this year. Um, I, like I'm thinking 15 plus this week. Like he's borderline running back one against Seattle. So I, I have I have a lot of confidence in Jamal Williams too. But if you have Jamal Williams and you're starting him, I highly recommend going and picking up Craig Reynolds just yeah, please in go case pick up in this Craig scenario. Reynolds. Just in please case pick up Craig they Reynolds decide. Too. Yeah, just in case if they decide to split carries for whatever reason, which they shouldn't, but they might. Another player I put in my video for Fantasy Pros of players you should be stashing. Go get Craig Reynolds. Stash. Too. Stashing. Let's move on to wide receivers as we're wow halfway through starts already. Ty- <laughs> you called dibs on this guy back <laughs> in, in our week four preview episode. I hate you for it. <laughs> But I'm going to let you take it away here because I am in full support of starting this player this week. And it's not like, like, okay, can, can we can we be transparent for a second? It's not a guy that you're like absolutely 100% thrilled to start, but I think you just kind of have to, not only because of the last two weeks, but the matchup as well. Yeah, uh, it's Tyler Lockett going up against Detroit. And Minnesota kind of exposed the secondary weaknesses of Detroit. And I'll say it again, Jeff Okuda is not that guy if he has a safety over the top or he's got a bracket help. It, he's not that guy. Which they're so going to do to DK Metcalf. That's what you're going to do to DK Metcalf. He's, he's Tyler Lockett. the guy they're going to focus on. Yeah, Tyler Lockett is a lock this week. Okay, he's he's got tw- eighteen receptions on twenty two targets over the last two games. Insane. That should that should speak for itself. Eleven targets a game. What? <laughs> eleven targets a game. Nine receptions. Like it is quite like it, it speaks for itself. He's hot right now. Right the hot hand in a great matchup that's going to focus on doubling DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and look, you start Tyler Lockett because he is so hot. If he doesn't put up another, you know, great performance like he has the past 2 weeks, no one can blame you because you're missing if you don't, you're potentially missing out on I'll say 17 18 fantasy points at this at this point. Yeah. Whoever is matched up with Oruarie every week start him. <laughs> <laughs> or Mike Hughes <laughs> or Mike Hughes. Or Mike Hughes, <laughs> right. If they <laughs> If they are matched up on Mike Hughes or Oruarie, you better fire them up because, <laughs> my goodness, that was abysmal to watch 31-year-old Adam Thielen just absolutely put on a master class against Oruarie. I mean, granted, Adam Thielen's a fantastic route runner. That, that's not a dig at Adam Thielen by any means. That's just like... Right, right. <laughs> oh, man, that was awful last week. That was every I'm other place sure. of pass interference. 
Oh yeah, illegal contact, holding, yeah. pass interference, like every single drive. Yeah, yeah, I I, I love Tyler Lockett as a start this week. Uh, my start of the week after going with Russell Wilson and Jamal Williams, I this is like less exciting of a name, but it it, it just falls perfectly into my lap. Uh, Amari Cooper, I Jacoby Brissett's his quarterback, so I'm never like I never want to say fire up Amari Cooper because. It could just be a week where Jacoby Brissett, you know, decides to only complete fifty percent of his passes and not eighty like he has recently, right? But he has back to back games with ten plus targets, seven plus receptions, a hundred yards, and twenty three fantasy points, right? Like I believe in one of those games was twenty eight fantasy points as well, right? And now he gets Atlanta, who have just been atrocious against wide receivers this year. They're allowing the most touchdowns to wide receivers, the third most receptions, fifth most receiving yards, and the fourth most fantasy points. Like uh, you said it before we hopped on here, Tyler. Like this Cleveland Atlanta game could be a sneaky high scoring game. Like we're talking like, you know, Saints um, Falcons week one, where it's like, oh, we just threw up 55 points. Like it was nothing. Like <laughs> nobody expected that game to be that high scoring. I think we can get something similar in this game based on how. Well, one banged up the Browns' defenses, but two, how, you know, how how many points Atlanta has allowed in the passing game this year? So, this one just falls right into the lap. I, again, I'm not super excited to tell you to start Amari Cooper, but I think you have to, given the matchup, given the past two weeks, he could be in line for a, another solid day here, another 15 plus points. So, fire him up this week. All right, Tyler, let's bring it home here. Tight end starts. You're actually going with another Cleveland Brown here at tight end. Well, not another, but after my Cleveland <clears throat> Brown, you're taking the other one that I like this week. <laughs> yeah, David Njoku. And we said it in the, my, oh my gosh, the Thursday night recap last Saturday. Correct. <laughs> See, got I had to we just, got there. You get, nailed it. <laughs> um, Njoku was just, I, the, the Browns did a great job of giving Njoku the mismatches. Where he was drawing, oh gosh, Edmonds, who's a safety from uh, for Pittsburgh, and other incompetent. I'm not going to say incompetent because they're better football players than me. Yeah. Um, they just not as not, not, not super great quarterbacks. Um, and 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 Joku took advantage of it. And I'm, I'm trying to remember where he finished on the week. He was the top five tight end, if I'm not mistaken. He was, uh, he was a tight end two on the week last week. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> a very good finish for David very Njoku. Good finish. Um, and now he's going up against Atlanta, who's giving up the third most fantasy points to tight ends. Uh, and again, Njoku is, is going to get the mismatches because, um, <laughs> yes, A.J. Terrell is there, but A.J. Terrell is going to be following uh, Amari Cooper. And AJ Terrell hasn't been like fantastic not, this year either. No, not not in. I mean, in comparison to the last couple of years, no. Right. right. Um, but and then like you look on the you know in the safeties. Can you name me one safety uh, for the Falcons? No. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, so, how long? How long do I try and think about this? The answer is so, no. <laughs> right. So if they line them up again in the slot or whatever. That draws a safety or a linebacker, okay? And Njoku is going to take advantage of it. Brissett knows, like, oh, that's a mismatch. I'm going to go there. He yeah. knows. He knows that. So, yeah, I think, you know, I, I don't know if, I guess here's the question then, you know, and I'll let you kind of take over then from here, but is Njoku a streaming option or is he actually kind of like a legitimate, like, roster piece that, like, you can – and 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 putting the roster percentages aside, when you just think of the right. name David and Joku, is that a streamer or is that a legitimate roster piece that like you can actually kind of trust a, a little bit to this point? Depends who I drafted as my tight end. Um, in multiple leagues, I know I'm not. I like oh, Mark Andrews and Travis Kelsey. I have in multiple leagues somehow, and I did not like draft. Ding Travis Kelsey in almost all the leagues I have him in. But when he falls to me in the second round, I'm going to take it. Um, I drafted David Njoku as, like, my insurance policy. So, like, it just as, like, a backup to, like, if Mark Andrews has to miss a week, like, I feel good about plugging Njoku in most weeks. That being said, if you have, like, a, 
what's a name? Like a Pat Fryermuth as your tight end. If you have a, I can't even throw out Dallas Goddard because he's been pretty good this year. And like TJ Hawkinson, I can't even throw out because I don't know if I'd even trust Njoku over him. But right, like if you're like, if you're streaming tight ends, like I want Njoku on my roster at least. So I'm not cycling through him because I think he will have big weeks like this. I think he will be targeted fairly frequently because it's it's either Donovan Peoples-Jones, David Bell, who hasn't done anything. Uh, and who else is who? Who's their third wide receiver after Amari Cooper and Donovan Peoples-Jones? Probably David Bell or Anthony Schwartz. Yeah. Oh, Anthony Schwartz. That's the name I was looking for. Yes. Like David, I would David and Joku over all three of those. Right. Like. And Jacoby Brissett likes targeting the tight end position too. Like we finally just started seeing it last week. This Browns offense is finally starting to find its groove. So I like, I think he's a good streaming option, but like I I like him as an insurance policy. If I have a stud tight end, like I, I don't normally endorse rostering two tight ends, but I really like him as an insurance policy. So let's do the name game quick, and I'll oh, bypass yes. like the like the top six guys because we gotta those come are up pretty with a drop obvious. For this. We gotta <laughs> we have do, a drop do. for this at this point. Um, in Joku, and, and not and, and we're doing this not just on matchups this week, but just like who would you rather have on your roster rest yep. of the season? David and Joku or Gerald Everett? I think I'm going to lean Everett based on what I've seen so far. Tyler Conklin or David and Joku? Tyler Conklin. I don't, ah. Tyler Conklin or everybody. <laughs> Pat Fryermuth or David Njoku? I would go Fryermuth still. Tyler Higby or David Njoku? Ooh, this is an interesting line. I think I'm going to go Higby. That'll be telling. Uh, I- I'm thinking too much about this week. I think I would still do Higby based on his volume. Uh, I'm assuming you you would stick Hawkinson over yes. Njoku? Yes. yes. Irv Smith or David Njoku? I think this is the line. I think I would go Njoku here. Irv Smith butterfingers man quit eating yep. <laughs> dawson knox or david njoku oh njoku because i despise dawson knox yes you do <laughs> Robert I, 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 like, tell, tell me when the man starts catching touchdowns and we could talk again but he hasn't done that this year so i will i will take njoku in that case uh robert tunyon or david njoku this is an interesting line i'm gonna say njoku because... even though <laughs> <laughs> Even though Tunyon's my start of the week, but like yeah, but this week I would rather play Tunyon over Njoku. If you're asking me to look rest of the season, I think I would lean Njoku, but here's the thing about Robert Tunyon, my start of the week. Thanks for that transition. Um yep. <laughs> You're you're de- you're you're kinda I don't want to say dumpster diving. But in the land of fantasy football tight ends, right? Like you you need to find people who are going to give you consistency, that are going to give you production, obviously, but like in that position more than ever. And here's the thing about Robert Tunyon. His, his snaps have been going up every single game this year um, since week one. Uh, I believe he played uh, 70% of the snaps last week. I say that very kind of confidently. I'll confirm um, that. Yeah, thank you. But they've been going up every single week this year. Uh, six receptions for 37 yards last week, his best performance on the season. It doesn't sound like a lot, but he was still the tight end 15 last week. Uh, 60%. 60%. Okay, I, I I knew it was between 60 and 70 Um but here's the thing about New England. They've been shockingly really bad against tight ends this year. They've allowed the fourth most fantasy points and the most touchdowns to tight ends. They've given up four, which is more than one a game. Granted, Mark Andrews scored two last week, but he still, like, one in every game. If I'm going to pick a game for for Robert Tunyon to score a touchdown in and we get this little mini resurgence of 2020 Robert Tunyon, I'm going to choose this game. A game where Bill Belichick will either take out the run game entirely for the Green Bay Packers or we'll take out Romeo Dobbs, which I don't think is worth taking him out because that just le- if Aaron Jones wreaks havoc, that's trouble for any defense, right? But like Bob Tunyon is the common denominator here of guy who won't be covered tightly by the Patriots, and they've been giving up a ton of fantasy points to tight ends. So you need a desperate start this week. I love Bob Tunyon in DFS this week as well. Uh, you want to check his DraftKings price for me? I I want to say it's probably pretty dang low this week. Like we're talking under. Probably right around three grand, three k. That'd be my guess. Let me pull it up quick. We'll have to fly through player props here then, as we're nearing the end of the episode. Thirty-five. Thirty. Okay, thirty-five. Yeah, that would have been. That's about where I'd expect him to be. I like that this week, honestly. If you have to dive a little bit deeper, I get it. But like, I love Robert Tunyon this week. I think this is the week he scores a touchdown, which will obviously inflate his fantasy points. We'll probably launch him into the top ten, if not top twelve. Yep. So. 
those were our starts of the week for week four. Tyler, let's wrap up the episode as we always do with player props over on Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy football where you can pick more or less of a certain prop for a specific player, whether it be receiving yards, rushing yards, fantasy points, whole nine yards. Uh, you can use our promo code fellows over there. They will, they will match your first deposit up to $100. You can find that link down in the description of the audio podcast or video podcast you're listening to. All right, Tyler, let's do it. Give me today's quiz. Oh boy. All right. All righty. All right. So I've got, I've got eight prop lines here and I've like got, it. I've got over unders on each of them of what I think I would do. Okay. Not necessarily. I think I would do what I would do. Sure. Um, so we'll, we'll start it off with, uh, Saquon Barkley, your beloved RB in over. <laughs> I didn't even read you the line. Uh, his line is at 80 and a half rushing yards versus Chicago this week. Over, over, over. No that's, question. That's I, I don't, I don't care. Over. If you're over. Chicago, have they allowed the most rushing yards to running backs this year? I believe they have. Uh, most rushing uh, yards. The they are, uh, they are seventh. They are seventh. Yeah, the Texans have a lot of the most. I got them. They're top. They, yeah, they are in the top ten for most yards given up on the ground. Yeah, give me the over though. Uh, Saquon Barkley's look like a new man. He's he's looked absolutely incredible this year. Uh, top three fantasy running back going forward. Give me the over on his rushing yards. Next guy we got is Najee Harris going up against the Jets. Yep. 67 and a half rushing yards. What are you doing? See, this is interesting because you, you look at the matchup and you say it's the Jets, smash the over. Najee's going to have a massive day. Najee's had like some actually pretty okay matchups so far this year. And uh, you, I'll let you read the stats on it, but like I'm leaning the under on that. Like I don't trust this Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line whatsoever. Uh, he, so he hasn't hit 67 yards at all this year. And this is just rushing yards, not even total yards. Yeah, right. And I know for sure it was the last three games from last year. It might have been more. I'm double checking. Um, let's see. But I mean, Najee is just yeah. like I. I just the confidence I have in him is I think based on name and volume alone, not on efficiency. Yep. Yeah. So I get. Oh, my bad. My bad. The three games they've played so far this year, he's been under okay. 67. And last two games, going back to last year, so last five total, uh, he has been under 67 yards. Now he's going up against the Jets, who are giving up four yards a carry. Um, and where their fantasy points kind of come from, right? Because the Jets, in terms of fantasy points, are they're giving up the 13th most fantasy points. Sure. Um, but they have given up like 16 receptions. They've given up a receiving touchdown, three rushing touchdowns. So they've given up touchdowns that inflates the, the fantasy points, but they've actually like stopped people on the ground. Yeah. They've been sneaky good against running backs on the ground. You taking the under? Oh uh, yeah. I'm going on. I think I set that up front. Yeah. Yep. I'm going to leave the under and I gave you the floor to do the explanation because <clears throat> I found it fascinating. Yeah. Uh, next up is Adam Thielen, who we were just praising for just torturing Detroit pretty much. <laughs> um, his fancy point line is at 11 this week versus New Orleans. There's so many, there's so many things that go into this prop outside of just the matchup. Okay. Because can, can we be real for a second? Is, is London, does London count as a primetime game? Like, like, uh, is it different enough than a Sunday slate? I yeah, I get I get what you're saying. Yeah. So so, so what yes. are we expecting from Kirk Cousins? Like, <laughs> is this one of those games where like London game for Kirk? He's putting a ton on his shoulders and he's just absolutely gonna crap the bed, right? Like, are like is that like I'm scared of that this week? Like I'm, but eleven feels kind of low, and especially when you get Marshawn Lattimore, who's gonna be on Justin Jefferson the entire game. We've seen the likes of like Chris Godwin absolutely torch the saints in the past because Mike Evans just for whatever reason, just gets into a fist fight with Marshawn Lattimore. <laughs> um, but like, that's tough. I'm, 
I'm going to lean the under, but that is one I'm I'm staying away from probably. I am taking the under on that. I just think this is a big Justin Jefferson game. I know he's drawing Marsh on Lattimore. I think Jefferson can separate from Lattimore. Lattimore is a physical corner. Um, so you get him kind of reaching a little bit. Jefferson can kind of burn that. And I know they played once already, and Lattimore pretty much got the best of them. I don't know. I'm just I'm I'm feeling a big Jefferson game. It's in London. Right, like I just think it's it different written... enough for Kirk, where it's like Kirk is yeah. gonna be like, ah oh, man, prime time again. I gotta show all these kids up. It's like right. Kirk, just just stop. Just throw the football. Don't I think I think the best way this. to look at <laughs> I think the best way to look at this game for Thielen at least is his game against Philly. He only had nine points against Philly. And I know that there were I know Kirk didn't have the greatest game, Jefferson was shut down, but like that's that's what I'm kind of expecting from Thielen. Sure. So, uh, anytime touchdown lines. Uh, Khalil Herbert against the Giants. Over. Yeah. Ezekiel Elliott anytime touchdown against the Commanders. I I I would guess on an anytime touchdown from him. That's not one that I would throw in a lot of parlays. Though. I don't have a ton of confidence in that. But if you're asking it, I I will take the over. I like it. Um, a guy that we talked about a little bit earlier, Josh Palmer. Uh, his line right now is at 47 and a half receiving yards over over, over. against Houston over like, okay. So it's okay. I, I need to give a, a quick disclaimer. I feel like Houston is one of those matchups where you go into it and it's like fire up everybody. Houston is terrible. Right. But like when we look at Houston though, um, in terms of their receiving yards, um, let me pull this number up quick. Like Houston Houston's like middle of the pack in terms of receiving yards. So like, I don't think it's always fair to say like, Oh my gosh, they're going to explode. Everybody's going to have an awesome game. That being said, this running attack for the chargers has just been absolutely abysmal. No Rashawn Slater. I believe their center is out for the season as well. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. Corey um, Lindsley. Thank you. Um, like, I just don't know if that like Houston struggles against the run, but the Chargers can't get anything going against the run. So, yeah, I'll take the over on Josh Palmer there, even though I think we need to kind of start realizing, like, just because a defense is bad doesn't mean they're they're giving up the most fantasy points to every single position. Like, the Seahawks are another perfect example of this, right? Like, they're not giving up that many fantasy points to wide receivers. Why? Because everybody is just torching them on the ground, right? Yep. So, I think you, we have to keep that context in mind, but I will take the over on Palmer's receiving yards. Nick Chubb. At 88 and a half rushing yards against Atlanta. I think you have to take the over on that. I look again, this is the perfect example of like Atlanta's a bad defense, right? They've actually been really good against running backs this year. Um, against running backs in terms of rushing yards, um, they are allowing, uh, I have the number, the 20, they're, they're 27th <laughs> in rushing yards allowed. Uh, they, they've only allowed 265 rushing yards so far this year. So that's under 100 a game. If I do my math correctly, that's about right, just under 90 rushing yards a game. So 88 is about the average of what they've been giving up on the season. So what you're saying is um, Nick Chubb is going to get all the rushing yards if Atlanta continues to keep them you know, in check on the ground. I don't dare. Every time I bet against Nick Chubb, he just torches me. So I'm, I'm staying away from the line. Ugh. <sighs> But I'm, I think I'm going to take the over. I don't want I I can't I can't in my right mind bet against Nick Chubb, but that's a line I'm staying away from. Interesting, because I was going to say this line feels like a trap. Yes, oh, it 100 percent feels like a trap. Yes, that's why I'm He's, not touching it. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, last one then, uh, JD McKissick, Mister No Name apparently to a lot of people. <laughs> He's at 23 and a half receiving yards. What if, okay, I need, uh, so insane receiving work over the past couple of weeks. Has has he not, uh, I believe, 13 receptions over the past two weeks? 13 receptions, 16 targets. That's incredible. And and you said his line is at 23. 23. And he's had. Playing from behind, more than likely. Right. 54, 32 the past two weeks. Even in week one, three for three for 20 when Gibson got all the receiving work. I feel like that's. I feel like that's a sneaky over. That's one of the easiest overs of the week. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a sneaky over. Like, I didn't think Carson Wentz would be checking down the football so much, but, man, they have quite a few design plays for J.D. McKissick to get the football in his hands. 
Yeah. I mean, Dallas has been relatively good against running back so far this year, but um, <laughs> they have not faced a receiving back like JD McKissick, like no. at all this year. So <laughs> yeah, that one feels like an over and an yeah. easy over. I, I would, I would agree with that. I would, I would go with the over there. I would rather, I would rather bet that line than, than Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb 100%. Yes, absolutely. Anything you want to add before we wrap out? This Stardom Saturday episode. Join us over on Prize Picks, where you can cash in on some of those lines. Promo code fellas, hundred percent match on your first deposit up to one hundred dollars. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Fancy Football Fellows podcast. Make sure to follow the socials: FF Fellows on Twitter, the FF Fellows on Instagram, Fantasy Football Fellows Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. I'm at Lucas Wenzel on Twitter. Tyler underscore Plath for Tyler. And hey, if you want to join a community of fantasy football league winners, head on over to our chalkboard down in the description of this audio podcast or YouTube video. We're dropping rankings, free rankings, free waiver ads, free props. Tyler, you released 12 of those yesterday. I I liked a lot of those props yesterday. Uh, And free trade advice. Everything. Everything is free over there, right? We're giving that to you for free right now. Head on over to our chalkboard down in the description. 100% worth it. Enjoy the weekend of football, y'all. We are three Stooges being dudes. We will be back on Tuesday next week to break down all of this weekend's action. Two Stooges being dudes, fantasy football fellas. We will see you all next week. Deuces. Deuces.